What's up campers? We're in Algonquin Park right now and we want to show you as much as we can about this park. So stick around. Now before we get going, I was wondering if anybody could see the difference in this pole. Huh? Anything? Yep, that's right. They've gone 100% paperless. No papers in your truck or car or vehicle, let's call it, or in the pole. So I don't know how they know exactly if you're supposed to be here, unless they run every license plate, if it's the honor roll system or not. But. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty weird. I don't know what to think of it yet. I'm kind of old school that way, I guess. I've been racking my brain on how to do this video because there's so much information on Algonquin, it's crazy. There's no way I'm going to be able to sum it all up. If I tried to put all the information that Algonquin has on this video, I'd, it'd be four hours long. So basically, I'm just going to have to stick to the basics for people who have never been here before. Now we're just a couple of people that like to go camping and I just talk to a camera and try and spread some information. But I can tell you this, just know that as you're coming in from the west, it's all marked by kilometer markers. So whatever campground, hiking trail, museum, store, whatever you're looking for, just look on your map it'll tell you what kilometer you you're looking for and then it's easy to find it all right now just as an example let's let's talk about the hiking trails there's 15 hiking trails here so as you're coming in the west gate you come along your highway 60 to the east each hiking trail is marked by the kilometer so if you wanted to go to whiskey rapids you know that it's at kilometer 7.2 and 13.8 for hardwood lookout missy missy lake is 15.4 and so on and so on we're at the lake of two rivers camping store let's check this place out campgrounds in Algonquin Park. Now that's just car camping. I'm focusing this video on car camping and not uh, the backwoods. As much as I appreciate the backwoods people, it's not really for me because I own a trailer and they don't float on the canoe very well. The one thing you do want to keep in mind as you're looking for a campground and a campsite in Algonquin Park is not all campgrounds come off of Highway 60. There's ones like Kiosk and Brant that you'd have to go all the way around and come in through the north. So keep that in mind 
as you're booking, as to where you are booking your campsite in Algonquin Park, because it's not just a little park. This place is huge. Now, for example, we are at Canis Bay, which is marked at 23.1 kilometers in from the west gate. And as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. See Brent and Kiosk here? They are NA for the kilometer markers. That's because you have to come in through the north. The one thing I'm loving about this park is this newsletter. You could spend almost a half a day just reading all of this information on what to expect, about bears, and you have, oh, they do have the discovery program, which is awesome. They have winter camping here. It's just endless. The one thing I did want to point out is you can rent a historic cabin here in Algonquin Park. Now, if you see over here, there's 14 of them. And they have anything from open concept to two bedrooms, to a couch, a living dining area comes with most of them. The one catch is remote cabins reserved by phone only at this number here. So if you don't have a trailer or any camping gear whatsoever, you can still get yourself one of these cabins. And if you look right there, that is where they are all located throughout Algonquin Park. At kilometer 43 is the Algonquin Visitor Center. We're going to check this place out. I've never been in here, so it should be interesting. <laughs> cell phones off. Nobody likes a texty texterson or whatever they say when you go see a movie. Just in case you didn't notice already in the beginning or throughout this video thus far, my poor little puppy dog has a hot spot. But don't worry, we got him on some medication and he's going to be just fine. It just looks worse than it is. It's not bugging him. He seems to be in his normal self. Let's see. Oh. Yeah. Poor guy. Poor guy. He's a sleepy boy. Yeah. You want to go do something fun? Want to go have some fun? Yeah, let's go have some fun. All right. Well, we decided we were going to go for a little hike and we wanted to check out the logging museum and you can get two birds stoned at the same time by going there because there's a short little hike and the logging museum which I've always wanted to see so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on our time warp or time lapse or whatever you want to call it and we'll film from Canis Bay to the logging museum which is at kilometer marker 54 and a half so we got about 20 some odd kilometers of time lapse hopefully it works out
You think he has any clue how much of an attraction he is? I don't think he does. That's a cow anyway. But Did you say it's a cow? Yes, cow moves. Female. Oh, I thought you said just a cow. I'm like, what? No. Bull moose has horns. A male. Oh well, yeah. No, but when I was going to the bathroom, they were talking about a cow that walk, that lives around here. Cow moves. Okay. I was very confused. I was going to talk to you about it yesterday, but I forgot. You know, you don't like the moose? <coughs> what is that thing? <coughs> I can't even move right now. There's people, like, literally standing in front of my truck. Only in Algonquin <coughs> Park will the moose stop trapping. You know what I loved about that whole experience is we picked the right time to leave. We got to see that moose and not to sound weird or nothing, but I really enjoyed people watching the moose because they were just going crazy. Look at the moose, look at the moose. It's hilarious for me at least. I know, I know, I'm weird. What do you think, babe? It's wonderful. She's very enthusiastic. Well, we are at the beginning of the Logging Museum Trail. Let's check this place out. Oh, there's leaflets. Nice. Wow. More like a book. They'd have to ship them squared. That's crazy. Look at all the work they'd have to do. Come along. This way. Work the crane this way. to bring these logs, sorry, over there, up and onto this sleigh. And then they would drag that to the river to float them down the river.
Easy, buddy. Hey, hey. Easy. <laughs> Don't fight the scoop like last time. Easy. Okay, that's enough. Okay, fine. Thank you. All right, let's uh, pull out this handy dandy GPS of mine and we'll go over some travel info for you. Now, if you're coming all the way up through London, or from London, should I say, to the West Gate is 420 kilometers or four hours. Now, if you're coming from Toronto to make your way up, it is two hours, 50 minutes, roughly and 280 kilometers. Now let's go all the way over here. Where are we in Kingston? Or sorry, Collingwood. And to come through, you are looking at two hours, 30 minutes, or 210 kilometers. Now we'll go to Kingston. And to go straight up to the east gate, you're looking at three hours, 10 minutes, or 260 kilometers. Now keep in mind, this is all just a rough estimate. This is what Google's telling me on Google Maps. I just did a little research for you, that's all. Now, let's go all the way over here from Ottawa to the East Gate, sorry. It's gonna be about two hours, 50 minutes, or 245 kilometers. Now, I also included Sudbury way up here, and it wants to take you down something like that to the West Gate, and that's going to be 3 hours, 20 minutes, or 280 kilometers. And then anyone coming from Tomogamy and way up north, you're going to have to come through um, North Bay. And from there, it's an hour 45 or 170 kilometers. Now this is all just, like I said, a rough estimate so that everyone knows roughly how long it's gonna get you to either the west or the east gate. There's one thing I did wanna point out and I think it's really important for people with uh, trailers coming here to visit. Now, you come from the west gate or if you come from the east gate, it doesn't matter what campground you're staying in. The important thing to realize is no campgrounds have any dumping facilities whatsoever. The only dumping facility in the whole park is right here. So it doesn't matter if you are staying in Canis Bay or Pog Lake or Whitefish Lake or wherever. You need to come here, and it's roughly around, I would say, well, there's 40, there's 30, so 35, so I'd say it's at m kilometer marker 36. This is the only dumping station in the whole park. And I was talking to a gentleman that's been here a lot of times, and he was saying it gets super busy around checkout time. So keep that in mind when you're checking out if you're in Canis Bay like we are, you have to backtrack to get all the way out to the west gate. Or say, if you're in Canis Bay, it works out in your favor. It all depends on where you are in the park, but you have to go here in order to dump. And you have to go here in order to fill your tank. So if you're staying long term, I highly recommend that you bring something in order to fill your water tanks up. I see a lot of people doing this and um, all they're doing is just going to your normal faucet in the park, filling it up, dragging it over to their trailer and dumping it in. But it's either that or pack out your whole rig up, bring it here, fill it and then take it back to your site. So keep that in mind. I think that's very important. I want to retract my previous statement. I was on my way down to the beach just to snap a little photo and then there's this. So it definitely has threaded lines on it. I'm thinking if you bring a hose you can hook it up here and fill your trailer before you find your campsite. Speaking of the beach, 
here we are. It is impossible for me to um, go through each and every campground in this park. If I did that, like I said, this video would be like four hours long or something ridiculous. So I was racking my brain on how I can go ahead and try and get you all the information that I can. Now what I've decided to do is right now I'm going to take a bunch of photos from the park uh, newsletter and I'm just going to post it two seconds each. So that'll give you two seconds to hit the pause button, look at the legend, look at the campground you're deciding to stay at and that'll give you hopefully as much information as you'll need because sometimes I find that the online version it can get a little hairy at times when you're trying to look at each campground and decide where you want to stay so this way you can just hit pause on your TV hopefully look at the legend look at what campground you're thinking about staying in look at where all your facilities around that area are gonna be let me know in the comment section if you'd like that idea or not. Well, if you're subscribed, you'd know what time it is. It's time for bumper sticker time. That's what time it is. Now, if you look, we got a Algonquin. An Algonquin over here. Over here. So it was a long discussion on where we would put this one. And we figured right under Kill Bear, something like that. Oh, it's crooked. There. I don't know how many more Algonquin bumper stickers we can get to see all of this park because it's so freaking big but I don't care I'll fill this whole whole back end up bumper stickers all the way up here all are gone because it means I get to see this whole park before I die yeah yeah all right we got a long drive home baby let's get going oh well if you follow our channel then you would know right now it's time for pros and cons I got uh, not too many cons actually what about you babe it's Algonquin Park <laughs> I don't really see any cons there I, I have a con it's a a con for people with trailers is the fact that they only have the one dumping station for everyone for all the parks campground should I say so that kind of sucks it doesn't affect us because we don't have like a toilet <laughs> we bring our own water in fill at home so it doesn't affect us or tenters for that matter but for people with travel trailers and RVs and all that fun stuff it that would be a pain in the butt there are so many pros like I think I did the math but I, I don't know I failed math but I figured it out if you got your kid out of school kids kid whatever and you went straight to Algonquin Park and you spent a week in each campground you still don't have enough time to see the whole park that way really? goals though goals <laughs> the lookout we usually go to we didn't this year because we went to uh, the log logging museum and the information center I'm gonna throw the logging museum kilometer marker now yeah <laughs> and the information center kilometer marker now and those two are must-sees as far as I'm concerned. Those were cool. Yes, very good. And the lookout that we normally go to, it's kilometer marker 40, 
something. I'll put that in right now. That is a must-see as far as I'm concerned. But we only did Labor Day weekend, so we didn't really have time to do all too much. Plus, with Bruno and his little rash, we don't want to take him out too, too much to, just to be safe. So normally what we do is we go up the 117 and come out the 35 and avoid Huntsville and all that stuff. Plus, at uh, Baysville, there's that fry shop. What's that called? Fork in the Road. Fork in the Road. Now that's usually a must stop for us. But we didn't realize it's not open today, so we ended up going straight through Huntsville and out to the number 11. But oh my goodness, they have they have some really tasty food in there. There's also a little um, bake shop, bake shop, and uh, where you can buy anything, including the Tarts. overpriced jams, tarts. I think that was lunch. Yeah. Plus. I find it's uh, not just the destination, it's the journey. When you get up all the way from Southern Ontario up this way, you kind of get sick of just highway running. So if you take the 117 to the 35 and up that way, it's a really beautiful drive. And it's Something that keeps you more engaged than just setting the cruise control and keeping it between the ditches. I would like to say that the biggest con with Algonquin is the fact that you will never see it all. It's, that is true. it's just impossible. There's still all those campgrounds in the northern part. Yes, I'd love like to see Kiosk and Brant. Brent, Brent, I love coming back to this park just because I have so many fond memories of uh, my dad bringing me here when I was just a little guy. So every time I come back, it's uh, a trip down memory lane and it's, uh, it's awesome. I remember going to like uh, all the... Um, shows at the amphitheaters and stuff like that when I was a little guy and I guess it kind of stuck with me because I love camping now right <laughs> I just I can't get over the wildlife we went into the lake of two rivers um, store twice on two separate occasions and they have a little whiteboard for everybody to write down their the wildlife they've seen and it just keeps getting longer and longer and longer and of course after seeing that moose I had to write that down well of course that was pretty amazing you know how many times I've come to this park and only twice have I ever seen a moose on the side of the 60 like that that was cool that was super cool <laughs> I was actually surprised at the menu <coughs> in that uh, Lake of Two Rivers uh, store and there's the cafe as well. Their menu in there was pretty impressive. We didn't order anything, but if it tastes as good as it sounds, we could have vetoed a meal and just gotten something there one night just to be lazy. That would have been nice. Keep that in mind for next time. Yeah, well, you guys keep that in mind. All right, for my final pro, I love the fact that from west to east, uh, along the highway, as you go through all the campsites, there you get a different type of forestry. Like Canis Bay is mainly uh, sugar maples and hardwood, whereas uh, last year when we were at Pog Lake, it was all pines and so depending on where you are in the park gives you a different atmosphere in that campground and that that itself is just cool we'll finish this video off i'm sure it's gone far too long and i apologize for that but there's so much information i can't help it 
So do us a favor and uh, I challenge you to throw down a comment of your favorite experience that you've ever had in Algonquin Park. And if you've never been there, throw a comment down on what you are looking forward to seeing the most. All right, but for now, until our next video, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe, like, share, yada, yada, yada. Um, my vacation days don't carry over. I intend on using them all up, so why don't you? Have a great day. I think you could use them all up, buddy. <laughs> I actually have, but <laughs> we'll figure it out. On your in for, on your way in from the west side from the east mm -hmm. west gate babe is mm, didn't like that day. So as you're I'm trying to film. Shut up, stop laughing at me. I'm laughing at you, I'm laughing with you. Are you gonna get it? This guy is filming while towing his trailer and his wife is steering from the passenger seat. Oh my god. Are you serious? Yeah. He's pulling a 20 some odd foot trailer and his wife is steering while he takes photos as they're rolling by. Wow. Got anything? Not really. It's a gun with Clark. It's amazing. You should go check it out. Don't tell me. Tell them. <laughs>